Hello, integrals and the French rules. It's Dolph. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'll be serving you an ancient origin set review. Now, so I was gonna do it Monday on my Del Fox video. Here it is. Now, you've probably seen these cards, read reviews on them, but everybody has their own opinions, so let me show you mine if you like to listen. Now, I'm gonna talk about four things. One is, does a card have big numbers or special abilities? Meaning, is it worth looking at at all? In which case, in many cases, we're just looking at the abilities, because, you know, only X cards have big numbers. You know that. Second is, what is the cost of, well, using those abilities? Is it cost effective, or is it something that you can't pull off consistently or reliability? And next is competitive, or thought to be competitive, or assumed to be, because we haven't actually tried to, try to destroy each other yet. And next is, I guess some cards will have a cool rating. Because not every card is cool, because cool rating's high, ignore everything else. That's just how it works. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the first card and where we'll be using Poker Beach's website because you know they have all the good stuff. Now, skip Oddish and Gloom because big number issues. And first real card is Vile Flow with frustrating pollen. Once it is fully evolved and active, nobody can play items. Nobody. So, as long as your deck is built to not use items and you're relying more on support cards, which does work. I've had deck does that. You're gonna be at an advantage because your opponent isn't just well tuned up to it. So Vile Bloom is expected to have a very huge effect in the game. Like nobody wants to see this card, which makes sense. So yeah, it's gonna be competitive and um, coolness rating. You know, it's more of a fear rating, than coolness rating. That's what Vile Bloom is. Now we're gonna go to Blossom, which can fit into a Vile Bloom deck. Now numbers kind of not there, but effects. Let's take a look. Wind Call. This is kind of like Dawn Chain, where you just hit the active Pokemon really like swap back into the bench, except it doesn't have all that great fighting tech, so I don't think it's there. Now, Flower Mix, you get to move all your grass energies around. That's a light amount of damage. For stage 2, the damage isn't there, and moving those energies, you're not really gaining anything. Maybe a situational advantage, but I think the cost is out too high, the payout isn't there, so, nah, no. Now, skipping Spinner Rack, going to Area Dose, this card is expected to combo very well with two cards, one which is coming up, Smudge Champ and Sceptile, and what it does is it poisons the active Pokemon and your Pokemon if it's not a grass. So grass Pokemon is totally unaffected by this, which is kind of weird if you're fighting another grass deck. Man, so we just poisoned both of them. Now let's see how it works with the cards that synergize with, with Sceptile EX. Now first attack, Coin Flip, 50% attacks are not so reliable, but hey, one energy sleeps and poisons the Pokemon. And next, Assassin Claw. This is going to be big because two energies is extremely cheap and it does 130 damage if you meet the conditions and still pretty strong even if without because two energies, 60 damage is crazy. So competitive, heck yes, cool, awesome. Now, Mega Sceptile, it's Mega Evolution is pretty good too. Stop. All uh, effects of your opponent's abilities don't work against this Pokemon, so like I know Sigilev, Suicune, they may not be in standard, but they'll still be around, at least expand. They're annoying abilities. Like I know Giratina as well, which stop your EX Pokemon. So this thing doesn't actually really care. Now, it's a second attack, two energies, a hundred damage, and you can put two energies from your hand, put them straight onto one of your Pokemon, so that's like three energies. In a turn, that's insane energy acceleration, and it fully heals them like a max potion. Like, what is this? This is definitely competitive, definitely really awesome. So, definitely see this deck going around. Now, next, we're gonna skip Combi, Vespa Queen. This is the next Flareon. If you're familiar with Flareon Plasma, that tech made it to finals, and you know, this thing is gonna be. The replacement when it goes away. Now there's gonna be a bit of a tune-up, and we're not sure how well it's going to um, 
let's say, adjust to X, Y. So it's kind of on standby mode until somebody makes something really good with it. Now the other Vespa Queen, the numbers aren't there. It doesn't do anything special, it's just numbers and you know, it's not EX quality. So we're gonna skip that. The Razian, I had a high hopes to this, but yeah, there's still weird stuff with it. Now Rescue, you search to your discard pile, so they have to end up in the discard pile, which takes time. Get two of any Pokemon, so it can be evolutions or regular, and just put them into your hand. The thing is, I think it does not could be useful until like mid late game, several turns in, and then you have prize counter, which if you're losing, you do a lot of damage. It's like, what? what? You have to be losing to do this? So, reliability-wise, you can see Verazium is not there. Not too excited about it. Flareon. Alright. All the evil evolutions that you see in Ancient Origins, they have an okay second attack, which is, you know, lenient. One of their element energy, two of anything else, and do something of mediocre damage. But they have the effect to make all Stage 1 Pokemons, meaning they evolve once, to deal the element of the particular Eevee. It has to fit in the deck and right now, without Ancient Origins out, we don't know if uh, it's gonna be good and what combos are gonna be good. So it's kind of like on standby mode until things start to settle down. Oh, well, there's that, that. Now you have the next two. Entei's first attack, Burning Scent. It's like, what, discard four cards? Now only up to 15 cards or energies and that's maybe too much so most of the times you might get lucky and get one or two and the other goes to this card so it's kind of iffy now with even without Lysander's trump card combat blaze that actually looks good because with skyfield bench filling popular decks like rayquaza it's not too bad if your opponent is playing a deck that loves to fill their bench but it's the very dependent game to game depending of your opponent's deck actually does it so reliability wise yeah but just keeping the back burner because hey, hey it may destroy those septile decks now the other entei you can have two pokemon tools to it now really see a combo there maybe two ancient charms or something then flame barrier yeah ancient charm thing it's uh very low damage it doesn't get you prize cards doesn't get you anywhere but again it makes some tough and heat tackle flip a coin if tails it hurts itself it's expensive and tastes easy to take down i well we just keep it on standby for now but i don't see much of it now we're gonna skip la vesta volcorna is this card good now first attack is pretty awesome you get a basic pokemon which is an ex put onto your bench and put two basic energies onto it that's quite a powerful setup card as long as you get la vesta and volcorna and put an energy into it, so there is a bit of an investment, so that's a bit iffy. Flame Thrower, oh my god, it sucks. So, Volcorna, not expecting much, but just keep it on standby, because it might something. Now, the next one, Carolina, stop. That's kind of like, um, first of all, this card has to be strong, and this, this is mediocre. You can easily take this card out, so I don't think I would use this unless I really had to. Now, Magikarp, gonna skip, but keep in mind it only has um, 30 hit points because Gyarados is gonna base attack on that. Now Gyarados, HP, not competitive with the Mega Pokemon. Thrashing Splash, this 10 damage for each to each bench Pokemon is still expensive and the total damage is there, but 130 is not gonna survive long, it's not worth that energy investment. Aqua Tail is just the same thing, sort of. They're just better cards. Like just use Malakia for like this. Now the other Gyarados, the more damage counters you have on your bench magic card. You can only have maximum of four, and you're using one to evolve. So this counter attack, yeah, I don't think so. Now Thrash, flip a coin if heads is a, it's just an okay attack, but still very expensive, and the hit point isn't there. Don't use Gyarados. Now the Porygon, this just like. Flareon. Remember, it just when this good stage two deck out there appears, maybe it might be good, but it's still unreliable because it only works on well, if your opponent's actually using fire Pokemon. Now, moving on to Relicant, and uh, no, no, this is the card that you skip. You get two Poke Tools from your deck, 
Yeah, you can probably just get it other ways, like simply drawing it, draw trainers, and the numbers aren't there for this one. Reggie guys, oh yeah, this is a Suicune replacement. The card that splops and blocks the X cards, because Resistance Blizzard, during your bonus next turn, they can't harm Reggie Ice if it's an EX Pokemon. So as long as you charge it up, it's probably going to be a very annoying card. But you have to charge it up and it's not an ability, so there's more leeway for your opponent to get through Reggie Ice. But you know, Suicune just makes us remember that card has always been quite annoying. Kyorum EX. Now it has the numbers, but the giant cost is there three energy swords first attack wow and it's just it's okay but still three and you can't use double colors energy ice scalibur four energies and you have to keep on discarding an energy to keep on using it so i don't see it as competitive even though it's coolness factor is like sky eye kyorum ice scalibur great attack but you're just probably not gonna get as much as prize cards if you were something else like Rank Blood. So, unfortunately, no. Jolteon, okay, it's just Flareon like the others. Ampharos EX, now this card, here we go. Lightning Rod, look at the top four cards, and see any lightning energies go straight to Ampharos. So it's helping itself, it is a great card to have, like, right on the front, right in the beginning of the game, anytime. Now, Sparkling Tail, uh, 100 damage for 4 energy is a bit low and the, its effect is conditional because if your opponent doesn't have like resistance or some strange Suicune blocking like effect like that Reggie Ice back there it's not as useful and 4 energies 100 damage uh, it's kind of expensive I think most Pokemons can do it for 3 but it has the Thunder Rod so it might be okay now Mega Faros oh yeah X of all so basically they're just two things one the defending Pokemon is gone, is knocked out completely, or is almost gone and is paralyzed. So if you get Mega and Faros up, it is a deadly. I mean, I, this is a fear. This is coolest level, powerful. Definitely gonna see a deck with that. Now, Rotom. You can see the 70 hit point here. It's like I don't even want to talk about it. And you look at the 20 damage. Then flip a coin. It heads. Choose a card from your opponent's hand and have him shuffle back. That might be annoying, except it might not stay as hard. It's unless you just happen to burn out their hands. So, might we'll make it into a fun deck. We'll make it into a fun deck. Don't see it into really something awesome. Unknown, 60 hit points. Uh, no ability. You can knock this Pokemon out and get one card. I would just rather draw a card than put a no on my bench in this card but there may be some cool really game changing effects that we don't know about so this is a card is on standby now ball toy gonna skip it not numbers we're really interested in clay doy rewind remove the top evolutions of each of your opponents that's gonna help them because a lot of the latest cards like just toga kiss would benefit from you putting them back into the hand because they're just gonna get more energy so I don't think this is a good idea also hyper beam the energy damage not there so play the way skip go lurk we shouldn't okay this this has been thought about because it, or talked about because it goes with the latest EV evolutions in that with attached energy once well, a stage two and it counts as fighting and uh, psychic and you can use any energies to power it up but I the reliability it's just low hit points. It's very expensive. I don't expect too much about this. Hoopa EX. Okay, this is like the new special shaman. Bandit ring, basically. When you play it, you get to search up for three Pokemon EXs. They can be mega Pokemons because they count as Pokemon EX for rule changes and right or in the game. And you get to put them on. To well, your hand just play them so when Hoopa comes out, like with the Ultra Ball, it's gonna be like Mega Red Claws, Mega Tyrannosaurus, and its evolution all gonna come out, like even with his Shaman. So, I think Hoopa EX is such a strong setup card now. Hyperspace Fury that's kind of like Mega Latios right now, too expensive to use. You really just want to quickly set up with his Bandit Brain. So, I think that's gonna be in any deck that runs. 
EX deck. So there we go. Machamp EX Ariados. Remember that grass card that poisoned your opponent and your Pokemon? So you use that, then you use, well, Crazy Hammer. It removes the poison, then does 160 damage at the poison. 170 damage, so you can pretty much knock out anything. If you get this much amp charged up, only three energies and thrash. It's out second attack, also pretty good. The more hurt much amp is, the more damage it does, and both his attacks have very high knockout potential. So this is definitely gonna be seen a lot. So next, Quagsire. Okay, not gonna talk about it. numbers aren't there. Regirock just is. We shouldn't even talk about this either, but it only works if the opponent has an active Pokemon EX, and yet it doesn't really compete against it really well because 120 damage is like uh, it's not gonna last too long. So I don't think I don't think this is the EX Pokemon Mega Killer you're, we're looking for. Not like Red Eyes. Now go Lurk. We saw it's Psychic version here. It's a Fighting version, and its numbers aren't really they are nothing really exciting. So move on. Tyranidar. Now I'm gonna have a little paradoxical uh, opinion in that. Okay, head smash. Oh, wow, three energies, 60 damage. But I know Pokemon that could do it with two, like Manetric. Ground break, four energies, and 130 damage, which is okay, but it does 10 damage to your bench Pokemon. So this EX Pokemon isn't that great, but it's Tyranidar. It is dark Pokemon, and it is. Tyranidar is so cool in this level. Who cares if it's a bad card? Not. It's gonna be used. And Mega Tyranidar double. You can put two Pokemon tools, which is a Spear Link and anything else you like. And Destroyer King. Basically, if your opponent has two damage counters, it is gone. Destroyer King, however, is one expensive and very conditional in that, well, you're gonna get a two shot it, and that may just be too slow. You ha may have to force some way to damage your point, like with Crobat or with Absol, something like that. So this Tyranidar is going to need a lot of beta EP setting, but who cares? It's Mega Tyranidar. We're just going to use it anyway. Sableye, Captivating Eye. Now this thing may be a very fast way to set up because you can play like Juniper and then use your opponent's Juniper. Or he's going to be a Sycamore now. Or use whatever all decks use supports to help set up. And this basically lets you use it twice. Other than that, Sable Eye is just... Yeah, nobody uses it, wants to use it. But you know, this helps speed, let me be fair. Inke and Malamar. Now, Malamar has two very game-changing abilities. You have to evolve it, and we'll see how it uh, runs up. I don't think so, because it doesn't get you the prize cards. But what does it do? You get to drag out one of your opponent's Pokemon and confuse it. And confused Pokemons are really iffy. And, uh, that could be useful for buying time, trash tentacles, 30 damage, and you get to get any card out of this card pile. Now, kind of like Junk Arm, and there were several very broken cards in the past that did this, so maybe Malamar might be there. I don't think so, because, I mean, you need prize cards to just get you anything. Alright, skipping uh, to Metagross. Yes, this card, this card's gonna be in Steel Decks. Magnum Warp Hell will fix Steel Decks kind of weakness of having a very low retreat. So retreat four, as long as you have this ability, you don't have to worry about switches in that. It's also a strong card by itself. You have to discard all your metal energies. So maybe if you do a hybrid deck, it's not so bad, but if you do, it'll pretty much almost knock out an EX Pokemon. Almost, but you know, you can get that extra damage else out of it. So I think Metal Grouse is gonna be a very good support just because it's a nice ability and it's still strong. Now you have the other mana draws, Theta Double, you can have two tools, don't see anything with that, and Guard Press. Um, this is, I guess, sort of EX levels, I would just use the other mana draws, because you know, cooler abilities. Now we have Registeel, alright, Regi Ice was good, Regi Rock, eh, Registeel, now yet you get to discard and energy, no, it's not going to compete against EX Pokemon. Now you have Gardevoir. 20 damage may be a bit too low, and stage 2 is just quite hard to tech up, and it doesn't justify the price to put this in your deck deck space and what you're getting from it, so I don't think God of War is going to be there. We have Whims of Scott, uh, we shouldn't even talk about because the numbers, numbers quite aren't there. 70 hit points is just going to get squashed. 
Giratina EX, this card is expected to be awesome. Rebellious Wave, Mega Pokemon cannot attack this. But remember, EX Pokemons are in Mega Pokemon decks, so that might be an easy workaround. Chaos Veil, expensive, but 100 damage, but the effect is pretty awesome. Can't play any Pokemon tools, special energies, or stadium, and this is quite a good luck out card. People are saying it might work well with Vi Plume if you can charge this stuff, so we'll see. I don't think it's gonna be as amazing as uh, expected, but coolness level off the roof, off the roof. Sligu and Gudra shouldn't even talk about it because it's just the numbers things just quite aren't there, nothing too amazing. So we're gonna skip a Persian. No, Eevee. If you have the layer EVs, like the one where you attach it to it and it automatically evolves, yeah, I think that one's better. But if you don't, uh, this is okay. Now, Porygon and Porygon 2, Porygon Z. Now, oh, people talk to me about this, but first of all, you have to evolve it to stage 2. And you've seen my decks do that. It takes a lot of deck space and a lot of overhead, and it's not quite as consistent. Next, discard all special t energies. That's pretty annoying, but depending how well will special energy shut down your deck. Like I think most only run four, so regular energies are in there, so it's not gonna be so bad. Then slow beam, the numbers just quite aren't there. Now this one here we go. Digital reboot. Choose any of number of your evolved Pokemon. Put them in. Well, re-evolve them. You can only do it the next turn though, because this is an attack. And you know, it might work well with Togekiss, but as I said, this takes a lot of overhead, so I don't see any future for Porygon Z. Lugia, oh yes, this is Mewtwo back, come back. Arrow Ball, more damage energies on Lugia and on the defending Pokemon. The scaling is quite high 20 damage for each of them, and them together, very good. Deep Hurricane. Well, stadiums are pretty much in every deck, so if you charge up Lugia, it has the potential to knock out defending Pokemon, so both these attacks are very relevant. Lugia EX definitely gets some of these. Alright, now we're moving on to trainers. Eagle Iron, shuffle Pokemon tools back to your discard pile. I never had a really issue with it, so it will go into a, I guess, tool dependent deck, kind of like a toolbox deck. If uh, that ever shows up now, paint roller. If you don't really need a stadium, but you just need a way to shut it down, use this. And I have lots of decks that fit this condition, so I would put paint roller on some of my older decks that doesn't really use things like Silent Lab or whatever. Level wall will work with certain decks, and you probably have a bunch of them, so don't worry about. It. Well, it just means that you can use these again. Lucky helmet. Uh, I gotta eyeball this to actually try this out, but it looks okay. If your Pokemon's damage, you get two cards. So this well, it eats up your Poke Tool space that might go into a Muscle Band, but we'll see how well these two cards will go and if they'll deck you out or something. Now, Sceptile, Spirit Link, Infernos, Tyranitar, they're Spirit Links. Ace Trainer, I had high hopes for this, but look very carefully. You can only play it if you have more cards, so if you're winning, you're gonna keep on winning, but how well or how fast will it take you to meet this condition? Can you just really get a prize card extremely quickly? And sometimes you may not even get a prize card at all, and you might never meet this condition, so maybe one or two might fit in the deck. Yeah. Alright, Hex Maniac. This will help, I guess, those niche mega decks that get blocked by those annoying Suicunes or. You get the idea, Giratina, and this will just give you one turn to just use your Mega Pokemon's power and just block through. So if your deck is really strong, but has like some Achilles heels, Hex Media might get you through. Color Drain City, I mean, is it going to be where everybody runs Mega Pokemon's? I don't think so. You know, you can just stick with Pokemon EX, so Color Drain City, not too excited about it. Giant Flame Forest, going to make and break some decks. I've already got many good deck ideas for this, so plant decks definitely bring this. Gotta bring this. Flash energy only helps you when you're playing against fighting Pokemon most of the time, because most lightning Pokemon are weak against fighting, with a few, few, few exceptions. So maybe not that great of a energy unless some fighting decks get all popular. You know, there's Machamp. So uh, all right, bad energy. 
I, I, yeah, bad energy. It's kind of like strong energy, except it's dependent on your opponent. And you know your opponent really wants to attack you every turn, and this is kind of like playing mind games with them. You want to hit me, take 20 damage, and my prop Mega Tyranidar's ability. So I think bad energy, you know, why not? Free damage, fits in a dark deck. And now we just have our full heart version. So I bask in their glories, and I think we got it. No, yeah. Mega Rayquaza, Primal Groudon, Primal Glare, they all have the Theta Evolution. Is this better? Now, it's worth talking about because it's numbers. When you evolve it, it's completely healed, so they have to be wounded in the first place for you to get anything. If they're not, the other version are probably going to be better most of the time. Primal Kyogre sets up faster, you get more energies really quickly. Primal Groudon, no trainers can affect it, absolutely awesome. Mega Rayquaza, you can evolve it very quickly. I think those utilities just are just much better. And the condition you may not ever ever use the healing ability, so you it has to like stay in its EX form. Fight, get hurt, and then you evolve it. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. So we, oh my gosh, we made it to the end. Perfect. So, yeah. what now? <laughs>